feet feature my wife's music in the videos and other music I find interesting. If you've watched my channel for any time, you never really know what you're going to get from music in my videos. So sometimes it's uh, uh, Mongolian war music and everything else. But um, I, I've added to this video um, music from a from a young man that goes to our church who uh, sings a lot of country, a lot of old style country in the. And so he writes his own songs too. So I've included a couple of his songs and a link to Forrest Guptill's music site at the end. So you can look up and listen to some of his music. Uh, he does concerts all over our area. Well, listen to my story, the tale that I knew about the time the devil came around with a new kind of brew. A new kind of liquor you call hellfire on rocks It'd burn you to your soul till you're living without socks Yeah, a nasty kind of gin Made of pure unadulterated sin Made enemies out of rain From the outskirts came the reverend to the devil he was rise with nothing in his hands but the words of Jesus Christ. He said, just as you came here, you'll be leaving here alone. I've come to lead these people to the Savior's home. In a town that drowned in sin, drowning in the devil's gin. Oh, but that's not how it is. The Reverend grabbed the drunkard by the collar and took him to the Yellowstone River where he spoke about the truth. He said, did you know our Savior lives eternally and if you just let him in, then that's where you're gonna be. Then that sinner dug on down where the water was dark and brown. Got cleansed and went back to town. He found the devil laughing on the throne made of lies. The people so consumed they had the wool pulled over their eyes. And that sinner went and climbed up the nearest mountaintop, cried out to the Father. How can you make this stop? Then the good Lord gave to this man The power of a western wind And that's how it's gonna wait Then the sinner came back down to his native land Walked right up to the devil with two raised hands And that sinner said The God of the mountain and the valleys far below Has built his kingdom here Now devil you go home Drive up all the gin. God beat the devil with the western wind.
biggest man in town. Yeah, I'm tired of the big guys looking down. No, I don't need a medal or a shining golden crown. I just won't be the biggest man in town. Well, they say if you want to be the one that makes it to the top, then you got to be a cutthroat go-getter and make everybody else your prop. Well, me, I'm just a good old boy, and I'm everybody's friend. Because if you want to be a man that goes through growth, you got to learn how to make amends. Yeah, I'm going to be the biggest man in town. Not just some faceless giant keeping the little man down. Yeah, I'll remember where I come from and show some others how. Let's all be the biggest man in town. This trail leaves Lovell, Wyoming, and you um, cross the bridge at Bighorn Lake, and you just start heading up the canyon, um, Cottonwood Canyon, and you'll find uh, the road is pretty easy for, for the most part, although I imagine if it was wet it would be not so nice. Um, at this point we're about ready to enter into Montana, and when we enter into Montana here we'll go over to what is known as Devil's Overlook, and that was where we had our lunch.
another thing that is found both here and in the Prior Mountains are natural traps. And in these natural traps there have been cave bears, dire wolves, uh, uh, saber-toothed tigers, mammoths, all of these sorts of things have been found in the bottom of these pits. There is a natural trap on this road. We didn't go to it today. But uh, the natural trap, if you in Wyoming, if you look it up, you can learn all sorts of things about all the animals they found in, in the history of it, and you can see some videos of it. You, this is again graded off, and you have to have permits and keys and a winch and all sorts of things to lower yourself into the cave. And basically, only scientists and university students are allowed in for excavating now. Um, there are some trap natural traps that have uh, are are yet. On, on caged and you have to talk to the locals to find out where those are at. Do you love rainbows shining in the sky? Such vibrant colors, a feast for our eyes. And did you know they're God's promise to not flood earth again? So we should follow the O.R. life to him. Cause for 40 days and 40 nights, God made it rain. And death covered earth until the sunshine came. Mountains no one could see a rainbow of promise to every good living thing. Now, do you still love rainbows shining in the sky? Such vibrant colors, a feast for our lives. Cause now you know. They're God's promise to not flood earth again. So we should follow, we owe our life to Him. So, friend. Well, what do you think? It's beautiful. Beautiful. Another overlook of the canyon? Not quite as cool as the last one, but still, still cool. Smoky day. Yeah. But the weather is perfect. I haven't been cold once. If you're drowning in a dark and lonely sea, follow God's message and it'll shine on you and me. Yes, do you love rainbows shining in the sky? Such vibrant colors. He's a feast for our lives. Catherine. Uh, I think it's fun. And Michael and Bethany are safely arrived in their destination, so that makes this mama happy. Horse Thief Cave requires permits to go into it, but there's um, some pretty good reasons behind it. There's no. probably between Horse Thief Cave and then 700 feet away is Bighorn Cave in Montana, so they're they're very close to one another. Bighorn Cave has 14 miles of tunnels. Horse Thief Cave has 8 miles of tunnels. And together, there's supposedly now been almost another 20 miles of, of caving found. Um, this cave area, you have to get a permit to come in here. And they only allow a certain number of groups on a certain number of days. But in 1992, it was made as the very first underground trail system in the United States. So uh, it 
you can get permits, and it is something that's that's really cool. Uh, it has some great stalactites, stalagmites, all of that sort of things, columns, flow so flow stone, all of that. However, some of the uh, things that it takes to get in there, one is called Denise's Crawl, which is no wider than 15 inches and 100 feet long. Uh, so if you don't think you can fit through 15 inches crawling on your belly in the dirt surrounded by rock, um, you might not want to go very deep into this cave. Hmm? Oh, is that the big one? Cool, cool. Let's go over this. Pretty big chamber back there. It is.
The town of Armpit is actually, all that's left is a couple of cabins. It was um, the site of kind of the uranium rush from the 1947 through 1960s. There was a rush out here to uh, find uranium and uh, get yellow cake is what they called it. And it did exist. It was mostly mined through strip mining. And there's evidence of uh, this uh, around the area where you can see they had dug up the surface digging into the layers of um, of uranium. But the price of uranium itself um, dropped and it made it unprofitable to mine uranium at all. So there's a lot of uranium mines both here and in the priors that have long since been abandoned. John Blue, who uh, was a German soldier who uh, abandoned the army in World War I. He made his way to the United States for, through Cuba and Mexico. Uh, he became a blacksmith and a coyote trapper, and he lived out here in this rock house and lived here uh, as a hermit. <laughs> 